Welcome back. So, so far we have set up the LionGuard Power BI connector. We've got our access token to authenticate and we've now connected to our LionGuard data. And we're here at our next step where we get to start actually working with our data and pulling in metric data. I wanna go through this step here and kind of show what's available to you and how to start pulling in your data and give you some tips and tricks to get started here. Now, hopefully the example I'm doing today, we're going to use the internet domain inspector for our, uh, for what the data that we pull, because uh, that is probably one of our most commonly uh, activated and deployed metrics or inspectors that everybody has uh, in their line guard instance. Um, but do note that to follow these steps, you do have to have at least one domain inspector um, activated in your instance in order to uh, replicate what I'm doing today. Uh, these principles, what I'm going to show you, though, can be uh, done for any other inspector you want to target. So you're, you're welcome to, to take what I'm doing and, and apply it to the uh, different inspector type accordingly. Okay, first I'm going to go, we'll come back to these functions here, but let's just go through these tables again. I, I did review this in the previous video, so I won't spend too much time, but let's just open up a couple of these and see exactly what you have here in, inside of Power BI. So... Our uh, Lion Guard connector has essentially made the different calls to these different uh, endpoints for you to build these tables out. Now you have control to change kind of anything that you like here uh, in this, they call the transform step in Power BI. And a lot of what that is, is you can, re you can rename the, uh, I'm sorry, the column name here, if you don't like host name and you want to call it uh, machine name. You know, you can rename columns here. Uh, if you can also set the data type for different things, you know, so you can change this uh, accordingly. And as you get further down in Power BI, and when you start to work with like you're doing measures or you're doing certain calculations or you're doing certain kind of um, relations with the data inside of uh, Power BI, sometimes it's important to make sure that you've correctly assigned the um, the, the data type, we'll call it here, uh, to these specific columns. Um, it does a pretty good job of guessing uh, to, to what to assign these, but really like right here, this ID for the agent, it's, it's not necessarily a whole number. It's actually really a, a string or text. Um, so I'm gonna change that accordingly. It doesn't really matter for the sake of this example of what I'm doing today to show you, but just to know that it's best to review this sometimes. And I think as you get further down, you'll see where it makes a difference if you're doing a whole number versus a decimal number, especially when you're doing like arithmetic and certain uh, calculations uh, with your data. So there's lots of steps you could perform here. Um, you can get rid of columns that you don't wanna see. So I can say maybe remove this column What's cool here is as I do this, it's it's keeping up with all these applied steps right here, and I can undo anything if I if I don't want that to happen anymore. See, and that that column will come back, uh, that that type will change. So you can always go back and 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 undo anything you're doing. So I I encourage you to kind of mess around in here a little bit and see what's possible, and and know that anything you you apply, you can undo. Another kind of cool trick here is right here on this advanced editor button up here is all of these steps that you perform over here can kind of always, you can always see the, uh, the underlying um, query here. Um, and I don't know, you'll see down the road where it's helpful to have access to this. And I don't have an example for you at this second, but, but being able to see this uh, can be very helpful in the future. And I think you'll find out why as you get there. So these tables are all available to you and you can kind of run through them and, and, and manipulate them and clean them up as you see fit. And that's a lot of what kind of this, this, this step is in Power BI is you're sort of cleaning up the data and you're prepping it for the next step. Uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to use these two functions here and how they come into play. I'm gonna start with the system metric summary first. So this, uh, this, this function will return the metric values for whatever system or inspector type, we'll call it, that you want to return metric values for. And in addition, if you want to just do it for one certain environment, you can provide that environment ID and, and scope it down. Let me show you an example of what this looks like and you can follow along with me on your side. 
The first thing it's going to need is your line guard instance. Now that's the same from the previous video when you authenticated. Your instance is going to be in your the URL of your line guard, whatever shows up before the dot app. That's going to be your instance ID. Before I place that, we're going to need another thing here real quick that I want to show you. We need the, the inspector type ID. So I'm going to hop over to this inspector type table real quick to help me look this up. Now I want to use the internet domain uh, for this example, and its inspector type ID is 2. So I'm going to use that as my reference. I'm going to jump back over here. I need 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, instance ID right there. Now I'm not going to provide this environment ID to scope down to a single environment, but it'd be the same step where you jump to this environment table, find the environment you care about, uh, and then place its ID right here to, to filter down. Once we did that, we're going to hit invoke. So one trick and one thing to know here is when you first call it, when you call that function, it's going to, it's, it's making that query for you. I'm going to hit this advanced editor up here, but it's essentially just making this, uh, this query for you to pull all this data kind of in the background, I will say, of the connector. But it defaults this table to invoked function. So to keep things clean, and you'll kind of see why this comes into play later down the road, is I would rename this something like um, domain inspector uh, data. You can call it a lot of other things. <laughs> That's my kind of attempt at it. Uh, it's, it's, let's look at what it really is. This is for all the domain inspectors that you've deployed in your environment, in your instance. In this case, this is for my instance. These are all the domain inspectors, and these are all the metrics which have had their uh, displayed set to true inside the app. Let me just show you what I mean there. If I'm inside the app and I go to admin metrics, if I filter down to our domain inspector, it's showing for all these ones with the toggle on for display, it's returning those metric values back. So you're only going to get the ones for which you have this display toggled on. And what it's doing is it's returning all the metric values in this value column. And you'll see some are kind of like nested data and some, you know, some are in what they call record. But all this data is coming back for every single domain inspector I've deployed for all my environments. Um, so this is onepath.com, then this is the acme.com domain inspector. So I like this, met, this, this function, but it's going to give you a lot of data in one query that I think you'll see, and, 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 and this personally sometimes is a little bit difficult for me to navigate, um, how to, to use a data, a data set this large in one table. Uh, and the future steps you're going to see when you start to visualize and build your reports out. I don't want to say you can't use this function and it can't be done. Many people do, and I think their their, their brains are they're a lot smarter than me, and they know how to to sort of uh, pivot these tables and extract what they care out of it. Um, but I, I do like to kind of lean towards this metric evaluations function a little more than I'm about to show you. Uh, but this is a um, a resource for you and something you can definitely use and this is how this is how it works i'm going to leave that table here and we're going to go to metric evaluations so for metric evaluations is you're going to you're going to list the metrics which you which you wish to evaluate you want to pull data for and it's going to pull back data for all this relative relevant systems it says here so if i'm targeting a domain uh inspector metric it's going to return the value for that metric for all the domain inspectors that I've deployed. Let me show you what that looks like. The first thing it needs is the instance ID again, and then it needs the metric ID. And you can give it multiple IDs, but note when you give it multiple IDs, you have to list it uh, comma delimited. There's also this idea of using the UUID, uh, which in your case, you're probably going to be fine with the ID, but the UUID is a universal ID that's, that is the same for all line guard instances. Um, and, and that's where these come into play. So let's go get a couple metric IDs. We're going to use this metric table right here. So I'm going to grab a couple easy ones that I think are pretty easy to understand. Uh, and, and for the example, you can follow along here. I'm going to do these, uh, the second and third one right here for the internet domain days until expiration in the registrar. 
That's ID2 and ID3. All right, so we got to note that. We're going to go over here to metric evaluations. Go ahead and put your instance ID. And then I'm going to do two comma three. Let's hit invoke. All right. So now you see I have those same domain inspectors, one path, Acme, Black Rooster. It's pulling back the metric values for all current active domain inspectors I have, but this is a little bit more easy to work with. For this days until expiration metric, here's my value. For this register metric, here's my value. Same thing, same thing. It's just two metrics now. Now you could easily work with this table, right? Uh, and, and keep these two metrics in here and go further down the line. But I work a little different, and this is my recommendation, is I would make each query its own, each metric, I'll say, its own table here. And let me show you how I would do that. I'm going to hit right-click on this invoked function, which this is the newly uh, invoked function that I just got from the metric evaluations. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to say reference. I'm going to call this one domain registrar. Uh, I'm going to right click and I'm going to reference it one more time. And I'm going to call this one domain uh, expiration. And I'm going to call this invoked function domain uh, master. When I reference a query, like I did with these two tables, or queries, sorry, it's, refer it's referencing this query right here. So if we go here, it's a carbon copy of this one. But now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply a step to filter down this uh, metric name column, and I'm just gonna select registrar right here. I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here to expiration. I'm gonna to go to the metric name and I'm now just gonna do the days until expiration. So what I have now is I now have a table that is just the registrar data for all my domain inspectors in one table. And then I have a table that is just all the expiration data for all those same domain inspectors. And those all originated from this master table right here. So every time you reload the data and you get the, a fresh new set of data, if you're gonna have a new kind of, if you add or, or remove inspectors, that'll happen and update accordingly into this table right here. So Acme could fall off and another one can come in just depending on what you do inside your line guard. But as that happens, you're gonna see those changes then dynamically reflect down here. Now I wouldn't do this, um, I did reference. I would not choose duplicate. Because when I duplicate this, what it's really doing is it's making the whole call all over again. It's using the metric evaluations call again. And that's gonna eat up your bandwidth and, and like the load time of your Power BI uh, load, load step, we'll call it, you know, when it goes to fetch the data, it's gonna eat up a lot more network if you're making that call multiple times, you don't need to. I'm gonna delete that. Because if you look at these ones that I use as a reference, and we go look at the advanced editor, it's saying that its source, where it starts or comes from, is it comes, it, it's referencing this table. So it's not making that network call again for each time you do this. Whoops, okay. This is a, it's a very, kind of a, a step to, to optimize and make things flow better when you want to kind of start organizing your data and split off. We can even, if we're going to be pulling a lot of metric data according, and it's going to be different type of inspectors, you know, I'm going to have a domain and I'm going to talk to my Active Directory and my Windows server. I can even just create a, a group, which really helps. And then I can pull these three right in there 
and I, I can start really organizing things here. And this is some of my recommendations for you on your end. Now I'm going to go into the next video and show you kind of why I prefer to do my metrics as separate tables like this. But the takeaway here is you could use this, you could determine what are the metrics or what are the data you want to pull back, you know, for, for those systems. You want to go fetch the IDs for those, and that can be, you can do up to 10 per this uh, metric evaluations call. Sorry, jumping around a little bit here. But you're going to go grab those IDs. You're going to make the metric evaluations call. And then you're going to kind of break out those different, um, you're going to reference that, that master table, we'll call it, uh, the amount of times for each, uh, it's the number of metrics that you, that you queried, right? In this case, we did two. Another kind of cool little trick here is like, let's say I wanted to pull one more thing here and I, I need to go back, right? Well, let's, let's, let's get a metric ID here real quick and, and show this for the internet domain. Um, I think MX records is fine here. So we'll use, uh, this is domain. This is, this is number four right here, right? I can go back to this. And you can see it right here. I can also go to the advanced editor. But actually, I can update this query real quick and just put a four in there. I can hit done. And now, this metric ID four, for now the MX records, is also coming back in this, this master table. And this does not hurt anything or change anything in these lookup tables of where the reference came from. That's where that reference is so powerful because you can kind of modify and change things uh, in this master table. But when you reference, uh, the, these tables are unaffected, essentially. They'll just dynamically update if new inspectors come in. So let's just reference this real quick because I did that step. I'll rename this domain MX records. And then we'll filter this one down. Cool. There we go. So now we have three tables where we're pulling back specific data. I want to proceed and show you how to actually now, okay, what do I do with this data? How do I visualize it and do something about it now that I pulled this data? You know, because we're only in the first step here. So let's, I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop the video here. And the next one, I'll pick it up and we'll show how to actually visualize and pull this data into a report. Thanks. See you there.